Hey everyone and welcome to my Deadpool and Wolverine reading vlog and recommendations video. This month marks the month of Deadpool and Wolverine coming out and as I always do with every single Marvel thing that comes out, I am doing a reading vlog dedicated to reading comics about these characters and recommending you some of the best ones, some of the best ones that are good for people who are brand new to Marvel comics, who are just maybe brand new to the characters, which ones to avoid, which ones are just really good fun to read, all of that stuff and I thought I'd do it as a vlog as well because I just really love taking you along with me, talking about individual panels some of the jokes all of that kind of thing so that is what we're going to be doing today and I cannot wait to get into it so I'm not going to do any more intro I'm just going to get right into it the only thing I will say though before I start is that I am just going to give the trigger warnings here because they are basically the same for every single comic and I don't really want to be writing them all out individually because this reading vlog is going to be difficult enough to edit I already know that so I'm just going to give you the um, trigger warnings now so we can just get right into it so the trigger warnings include cancer mentions when it comes to Deadpool specifically then for both of them there will be in all of these comics blood gore violence guns human experimentation sometimes kidnapping and all of that kind of thing if there's anything else more specific to talk about with each comic I will obviously put it at the bottom or talk about it more specifically as I'm I'm talking about that comic in general and I think that's all I've really got to say I'm not going to go through my TBR for this because it's long enough as it is so let's just get into all of this reading and get started with reading Deadpool and Wolverine comic. I've just finished the first volume of um, Grant Morrison's new X-Men and yes it is definitely a good place to start if you are looking for a um, easy place to start with the X-Men because it goes right into what mutation is, who the team are, what the powers are, this kind of thing. You do occasionally get a reference to something that's happened before but it is quite easily explained throughout the story as well so you do find out what like that past bit is so you you can kind of still follow along with it this kind of thing but what I will say is that I do think that this should have been lengthened a lot there is obviously the rest of the series as well but it's kind of gone through some quite well very horrific things and then it's just kind of moved on very very quickly so um in this one I'm not going to say that this is a spoiler or anything because I think this works as a trigger warning as well which definitely needs to be said there is a genocide in this one um very much if you've seen um, X-Men 97 you'll know exactly what I mean it is the attack on Genosha and specifically Cassandra Nova has sent the sentinels off to literally kill everyone in Genosha which is 16 million mutants and it's very much just sort of in that one issue and then they mention it a couple of times later but you don't see anything further than the couple of panels where they um, are looking for survivors and that's it it very much moves on very very quickly from there um, we also have a storyline in here as well where um, some people are kidnapping mutants and harvesting their organs to um, graft onto themselves to give them mutant powers and that is very much again just in that one single issue and then moved on from very very quickly and I do wish that uh, like that we'd had more time with that even though they are horrific storylines I think we needed more time with those um to sort of explore the ramifications of this I genuinely think the fall of Genosha should have been an entire volume to itself not just a single issue the same with um the experimentation and the organ harvesting of mutants and we seem to move on very very quickly from both those things so I do wish we'd had a little bit more with that because it very much just flew by very very quickly and I was a little bit like wait whoa slow down a minute these horrific things have happened why are we not talking about them more and I understand it's mostly because we're focusing on Cassandra Nova as well and things like this but I just wish that there had been a little bit more of that because it just sort of fled by very very quickly if you want a more sort of nuanced take on that X-Men 97 does a really really good job with the Genosha uh, stuff I will say uh, they don't go into the organ harvesting or anything but um, given current events and everything else I did want to give a warning for that and then also X-Men 97 and to say that that does it a little bit better than it does in the original comic but like I said if you can read stuff like this without feeling triggered or anything it is definitely a good place to start and I'm about to start the second volume which I don't think I ever read I know I've read the first one I may have read the second one I can't remember I know I've obviously read the first one I think I may have read the first two or three 
I can't remember but either way I'm going to start on the second one these are not my favourite in the world I won't lie um, I much prefer sort of later runs but if you are looking for a good place to start obviously this is a good one to start with and obviously it gives you that grounding in Cassandra Nova so definitely a good one to start with in that sense but it's not my favourite and definitely check the trigger warnings I'm currently on volume 2 and they are currently yeah, I'm still going on about the organ harvesting and things and this was very horrific you don't actually see anything but you get very close to it with some people being captured you also see scott and emma very nearly um like beheaded at one point or scott nearly being beheaded and things like this for his eyes because he's obviously got the laser blasts all of this kind of thing and there is a lot of talk as well of harvesting children's organs as well and using them as sort of like a body farm so please be warned about all of that because this is very dark and very heavy but what i will say as well as I do like, on a lighter note, the hints to Phoenix. So there's been a few times now where Jean's protected the school and she's basically been on fire like the Phoenix. And then there is also this shot here where she is inside Charles's mind and as you can see her hair looks like a Phoenix and I really like that. They haven't actually covered what the Phoenix is or anything so far but as long as you've seen the movies you will know what Jean Grey and the Phoenix is I will say um but I just really like these hints at it I don't think Jean Phoenix is out in this one but I do like the hints at it to say the least it's now kind of late in the evening um and by late I mean 10 to 2 in the morning <laughs> um I got very distracted halfway through reading volume 2 and then like the evening happened and I ended up watching Logan and then also Multiverse of Madness um, in my rewatch and I've just finished the um, second volume of the comic so first of all Logan once again ended me um, it's the first time I've watched it since it came out in the cinema and watching Logan die still hurts definitely still hurts and hearing that whole bit because obviously in the Wolverine Kamiko tells him you will die holding your heart in your hand and then he dies holding Laura's hand gets me every time just thinking about it just gets me you know so that was very very sad and then I cheered myself up with Multiverse of Madness because I wanted to watch the multiversal film as well before the movie came out but anyway I just finished the second comic and this is definitely not my favourite comic run in the world first of all it's very very dated in a lot of ways because there's a lot of like fat jokes there's also a gay joke in here as well um I should say this came out in 2001 and you can really tell by the way the jokes are um put out and stuff so that was not fun whatsoever um and the artwork didn't really work for me either I will say it's sort of everyone looks really really elongated in a real way which I don't really like so you can sort of see it with the um, cover here and stuff like this it looks like this the whole way through so that wasn't my favourite and I also just wanted more from like Sandra Nova and stuff because they very much skipped over Genosha very very quickly it happens in like one issue and then it's mentioned a couple of times throughout the rest of it but you don't really get sort of anything proper Genosha based which was a little bit like something massive has just happened 16 million mutants have just died including Magneto and no one seems to really care you know like they care and they go and they try to sort of pick up the bodies and things like this but it just sort of didn't go into it as much as I wanted it to and then it did focus a little bit more on the um like you men who are essentially kidnapping mutants and using them as like um organ harvesting to get their powers and things they went a little bit more into detail about that but it just didn't go into it as much as I wanted it to either um and things like this because they were focusing a little bit on Cassandra Nova but even then some of her plans were just kind of skipped over as well because you saw her going off to the Shi'ar Empire and then the next thing you know she's completely taken it over and you haven't seen her doing any of that or anything else so I will say that my main like one of my main criticism of the actual story is that it was just a little bit sort of squashed in and I do think it could have Sort of spread out over a longer a period of time and the other criticism I have is that um, Charles has been unconscious for most of this or Charles's body has essentially been unconscious for most of this and in the end he sort of gets revived and everything else and then he is healed and therefore he is not a wheelchair user anymore at the end of volume 2 and I'm just not really here for storylines like that where the disabled person is cured um, it just makes me feel really really sort of icky and things like this I don't really like it because um, obviously that's really really ableist and things and yeah that just wasn't for me so I think I'm going to finish this story here because I've gotten everything I need about Cassandra Nova 
and I think tomorrow I'm going to start on, I think, some Wolverine solo stuff. Maybe Deadpool, I'll see how I feel, but I'm going to start on the Wolverine and Deadpool solo stuff. And actually, speaking of them, I've actually just ordered, and it hopefully arrived before I finish this video, the um, little Deadpool and Wolverine charms that they're selling in America at the moment. Someone has 3D printed out their own version for the UK lot because we are not getting the little grabber machines or anything so we can get our own. And so people are resorting to 3D printing them. So I've just got on a couple of those as well because I've been loving the design of those so much. They look so cute with their little friendship bracelets that look like half of their masks each and when you put them together they're in a heart shape and they say best friends on them. I really really love them. I've been loving them like ever since they like released that poster and stuff so now that people are making them I was like I'm gonna get one of those as well and when it arrives and everything I'll obviously show it to you if this vlog is still going but either way I will probably also leave a link down below to where I got mine so if you want to get yourself some as well you can so I'll definitely do that but yeah I just got that as well and now because it is now 5 to 2 in the morning I'm going to bed so I'm going to go to bed and I'll start again tomorrow when I'm a little bit more awake and hopefully I'll have a better time with some of the comics I'm going to read next and I mean to be honest this always happens to me it always is like the first comics of a vlog always end up a little bit iffy and then usually fingers crossed touch wood there we go touch wood things will go better from here and everything will be on the up so fingers crossed on that I've got the bad run out of the way that I wasn't keen on and I'll move on from here and I should actually mention I gave both these three stars though but not my favorite by any means they are a good starting place for X-Men in terms of the um like sorting out the um, like lore of them and who the characters are, their relationships with each other, what their powers are, um, the status quo of the X-Men within the MCU and stuff, or the Marvel comic universe I should say, but they, they haven't aged that well in terms of like sexism, ableism and homophobia and fatphobia as well. There's only a few comments throughout but there are still a few of them which made me feel a little bit sort of ick so just to warn you if you do want to read them I do recommend them in terms of just having a good sort of baseline knowledge of the X-Men but yeah I wanted more from these and less sort of slightly bigoted comments I know it was 2001 but it still could have been done without but yeah them are the breaks for it but either way yeah that is my thought on them and tomorrow like I said I'll go on to something else I'm going to stop talking now because it's five to two I'm getting rambly so I'm going to bed. So I've just started with Wolverine Origins. It wasn't actually on my list but then I went probably best to start with the Origins let's be honest here because obviously I've never read it before. I've read a lot of Wolverine comics but probably the best place to start with this vlog with the origin see if it's a really good origin story or not or if you can just sort of skip it whatever but anyway i just want to quickly mention just how gorgeous the artwork is we're currently in 19th century canada at the moment and we're following a young girl who's just come up to the howlett estate to basically be a friend for young james who is a very very sickly child and there is also another kid there who is part of the logan family um, it's a little bit confusing. I think they're called the Logan's family or the dad's called Logan Whatever who also works on the estate and the three of them have become good friends because they are the only children there and obviously Like James is gonna turn out to be Wolverine most likely because his name is James Logan Howlett if I remember rightly He's sometimes called James. He's sometimes called Logan. Anyway, we know that one of his names is James and the other one is Logan so I think there's gonna be some kind of like name swap or something at some point but yeah, I'm really, really liking the artwork so far. I'm really liking the storyline of this so far. We're only very much a couple of pages in, but very good start so far. So Logan's now grown up a little bit, and they've ha now had to leave the house for plot reasons I won't go into in case you want to read this, but um, they've now been living for the last two years on this, um, basically in the middle of nowhere, working the land, this kind of thing, and this guy's gone, that kid, he's a Wolverine, and I love that. I know this isn't where he gets his um, name from or anything. He gets that later on in Weapon X, but... I love they put that line in. I love it when they put stuff like this into comics and things like this because you're like, ah, this is where the thing's coming from. And they're saying, it, they're comparing him to a Wolverine and they're now saying he is a Wolverine. And it's like, I just love lines like this. I just love lines like this so much. 
and that's Wolverine Origin done. I will say that if you are a massive fan of Logan and you just want to know how he got his powers and when he got his powers in those first few years after he got his powers, this is definitely a good one to go for. But I wouldn't say it's absolutely essential by any means because it is very much just focusing on those early years up until he's about... 20 I think basically and so while it's important and you can read it it is definitely worth it for the artwork it is definitely not the sort of essential thing you need to read um I will say as well that there are a lot of fat phobic comments in here I will say this was written in 2001 so that kind of thing was kind of acceptable back then but it definitely isn't now so in that sense it hasn't aged well there is also a lot of sexism in here as well with men fighting over women that are theirs when really a woman can choose what she wants and who she wants and all the rest to it which is a little bit annoying but as I said if you want to read this if you want to see Logan's earliest days and what happened to his parents and what happened when he got his powers all of this kind of thing this is quite a good one if not you can easily skip it I've now just started Weapon X this is by Barry Windsor Smith and this is actually the story of how Wolverine got the adamantium and things like this and what happened to him during Weapon X and um, because I figured I've done the origin story now let's go into the adamantium bit and I will say that the artwork is not really doing it for me I won't lie I really hate this kind of slightly sort of high contrast slightly psychedelic look it just it doesn't really work for me so that's a little bit sort of detracting from this but I will say the actual storyline is really good because we are actually seeing what happened to Wolverine in not exactly real time but we are seeing what actually happened to him um like at Weapon X how he ended up there he was kidnapped essentially and he was forced into having this adamantium on him and he was essentially um, mind wiped and then brainwashed into essentially being Weapon X so that's all very very interesting but the artwork isn't quite doing it for me. And now I've just finished Weapon X and while the um, artwork continued to not really do it for me this whole way through I will say that the storyline did work for me quite well um, because it's talking about obviously like where the adamantium claws came from, why Wolverine is like he is, um, like what happened to him during Weapon X and all the rest of it and I will say it is a very heavy storyline including things like brainwashing, it's also got um, uh, like human experimentation um, being happening to him, animal death, there's a lot of animal death actually, as well as human death, and that is via murder, via Wolverine, um, and all of this kind of thing. I'd definitely say this is not one for anyone who is squeamish whatsoever, because there is quite a lot of blood and murder and all the rest of it in here. And obviously you do see him being experimented on, you hear him um, and talking a lot about or like, everybody else saying he's going to be in a huge amount of pain. For example, there is a scene in this where Wolverine is getting surgery and he is awake for it. Um, and they have him under like a low level anaesthetic, but he is still very much aware of what's going on as they are operating on his arms. And the guy in charge is like, yeah, he's in pain. We don't care this kind of thing so if you are squeamish about anything like that definitely don't read this but if you are um someone who wants to read more about the adamantium side of things how wolverine became obviously weapon x and how he got like the metal claws and the metal skeleton and everything else this is definitely the one to go for because it is all there look <laughs> there's a little <gasps> Oh my god, I love these. I lo oh, oh my god, I love them. Uh, they're not the metal ones that you can get, obviously, in America in the um, cinemas or the grabbing machines or anything, but... And, like, they're clearly 3D printed, but I love them. They're exactly what I wanted. Like, I... Oh my god. Like, if you're in England and you want these, these are the ones to go for. I'll leave a link down below to where I got them, but... Look at them. Oh my god. They look so cool. I'm so happy with those. I'm so happy with those. And these are going straight on, I think, my bookcase. I'm going to hang them off some of the hooks I hang my fairy lights off of, I think so. Look at them. Oh my god, I love them so much. Oh, I love them. I've started Death of Wolverine, and so far, so good. Um, Wolverine's lost his healing factor. Everything else is fine about him. He's still got his strength, his speed, all the rest of it. But his healing factor is gone, which is definitely a problem because obviously his claws come out and go back into his skin again, covered in a lot of germs, which means he could get really, really ill. He's also mildly radioactive because he's been around so many bombs and explosions and all of this kind of thing. So essentially, he is slowly dying, and there is now a bounty out on his head in Madripoor 
Four, which is like um, a sort of lawless city essentially you see it in falcon and the winter soldier so if you've seen that you know what madripoor is anyway there's a bounty now on his head for him to um like be brought in alive essentially and now logan's gone there to deal with it and what i wanted to say is that i love this here because this is obviously one of the fight scenes and I love a really well choreographed fight scene and that's really well drawn in a comic so you can actually see what's going on because I do find that in a lot of comics that it can be quite difficult to understand what's really going on in a fight scene because obviously you can only have still images which makes it a little bit more difficult to figure out what's going on but this definitely works. I really wish more fight scenes looked like this to be honest because it's really easy to see what's going on and you still fully get what's happening and everything else and you still get that action and everything i just wish more fight scenes looked like this to be honest i'm currently about a third of the way through uh the death of wolverine complete collection at the moment and dead like wolverine i don't know why i nearly said deadpool deadpool's not in this or oh, he is but later on anyway i think um logan died too quickly in this he died within the first four issues and it was very very quick in the sense that he was covered in adamantium and he just kind of became a statue and died that way and it was never really sort of like a drawn out thing and I thought it was going to be a very long drawn out thing as his healing power slowly fades and all the rest of it and now we're following other experiments instead from the facility where he died which is um like a updated version of Weapon X where they're trying to make other Weapon X um like like soldiers i guess you could say and things like this and they've managed to escape and um we've got this team who we are now following who escaped like i said who have powers now and they're just trying to survive and i was like well logan died quickly and we haven't really seen sort of anybody else sort of react to this or anything we um i would have liked to have seen maybe like the x-men reacting to this i know there is a companion that i also have that may cover that i don't know but i kind of wish that there have been more from Logan, I guess you could say. I don't know if he's going to turn up again, because obviously he's going to come back to life at some point or whatever, but at the moment I'm just a little bit like, well, that happened quickly, you know? And I'm a little bit sort of sad about that in a way. Um, I don't know. Am I sad about it? It's a weird one. Because obviously it was the death of Wolverine, and I think it's because I built it up in my head to be like Logan, where it's going to be really, really sad that he died. And yes, it is really sad that he died, but it's not like hit me by any means or any stretch of the imagination like logan did or anything else i think it's just because it happened a little bit too quickly but anyway i'm going to carry on reading this see what i think see what's going to happen now um and see if he comes back all of this kind of thing and now we know why they took uh why we were following these uh, specific people and it's because they've got um essentially a genetic mutation in them that was put into them which essentially means that they're going to die very very quickly because they were only ever meant to be sort of the test subject before Weapon X did what they did to these people to their actual soldiers so what they've done now is kidnap a whole bunch of people to do with Wolverine who have healing factors and Charles who doesn't I don't know why Charles is here but they do have Laura who is his clone slash, do uh, slash daughter we've also got Dakin who is also Wolverine's son if I remember rightly we've got Sabretooth and Deathstrike who are some of Wolverine's enemies who have very similar claws and then also um, like healing factors and then they've also got charles and i'm like why is charles here like don't get me wrong very excited to see charles but i'm like why is charles here charles doesn't have healing factor or claws so intrigued to see what they want with these people further than just sort of healing factor and why they've brought so many to the, uh, of them together and why they also have charles and maybe also see everybody else's reaction to the fact that wolverine is dead because i'm reading the death of wolverine collection it means that it's collected a whole lot of things to do with that in one great big um volume and it seems to have put things out of order because we were dealing with everybody being kidnapped by the like people who were experimented on and there were flashbacks in that to what they were doing beforehand and now we're getting that like afterwards like the it's called the logan legacy so it's dealing with everybody who's been kidnapped and what like they were doing beforehand when they found out this kind of thing like that logan had died and i'm like why did we not put that first because the flashbacks were right there and both of these were running like concurrently from what i can tell when they were being released originally so why put the flashback stuff first then put in the 
actual storyline because I would have put that stuff first and then put the other bit in but that's just me either way what I did want to mention on a positive note though is that I really like this bit here we are dealing with um, Sabretooth and I really wanted to point out that I really quite like this slightly watercolour look artwork I think that can really work in a lot of places and I think it's really working on this one. I really like what it's doing with like the colour palette and everything and really helping it sort of look different from all of the other stories and all the rest of it. So I just wanted to quickly point that out on a more positive note. This has now jumped over to Wade teaming up with Captain America to destroy the last things of Logan's because if they have any type of DNA of his lying around they run the risk of him being cloned and used for the wrong purposes or this kind of thing and they're just talking about Logan and things like this and saying that um, Steve when he first met Logan they fought each other instead of the robot they were supposed to be fighting and he was um, he actually said to him that um, that the Avengers would never have him and it's something he's always regretted and then um, Wade has said that some of his um, memories with Logan is talking about like regrets and all of this kind of thing because obviously Logan's lived a very very long life and has got a lot of regrets and all of this kind of thing and then he was saying wait did Logan leave me anything um, in his will and Steve He's like yeah he did and Wade goes oh what did he give me and where is it and Steve goes we burnt it <laughs> so that's um, a kind of fun one but I also just wanted to point out this panel here where Wade says every time I refrain from killing I like to think that what, uh, Logan would have been proud of me and that little sort of smiling Logan bit as well and I just think that's a really lovely um, thing to put in as well because obviously Logan did try to be better all the time and with the X-Men and everything and him, uh, like Wade saying that as well. It's just a lovely little tribute, and I'm loving seeing the two of them on this mission, trying to get the last bit of um, Logan that they have to get because it was in the wrong hands and everything. And I'm just loving seeing them just sort of reminisce about him, essentially. I'm loving this bit where they're just reminiscing. It's a wonderful thing. I'm really enjoying this bit. And now we've moved on to, um, it says Life After Wolverine, so I'm guessing we're going to be talking more with the rest of the X-Men, and it's opened on Cyclops and... These opening panels, I'm just going to read you what they say because they sum up Scott's life quite perfectly. It says, I've dated two psychics. My father is an emotionally distant space pirate. My time traveling son from the future is older than me. My younger self hates me. And yet somehow you were the most complicated relationship in my life. If that doesn't sum up Scott, I don't know what does. Because he has dated two psychics. He's dated Jean. He's also dated Emma. He's technically also dated... He, he, he married, if I remember rightly, Jean's clone. And then had that time-travelling son, a.k.a. Cable. And yeah, yeah, this is also set during the time when the younger X-Men have been brought forward to the future. Or like the original X-Men were brought forward to the future to now at time of comics. So young Scott's running around, young Jean's running around and a couple of other younger set are also running around as well. And yeah, if that doesn't just sum up Scott's life and also the X-Men where you've got wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff going on. I don't know what else will. This sums it up perfectly to say the least it really does and i just i love those opening panels because that really sums up scott's life it really does and now with that i've just finished the death of wolverine the complete collection and i take back what i said about not seeing what everybody else's reaction was to wolverine dying because it's right at the end essentially i wish that had been a little bit further forward and when maybe dealt with the other weapon x people like later on maybe last or something i don't know admittedly i did not get the full story because that i'm guessing is going to be in the companion i don't know i don't have time to read the companion right now so i'm probably going to read that another day entirely maybe not for this role maybe just for fun later but as i was saying we did actually see a few of the mutants um, morning Logan so we saw um, Scott right at the beginning like I mentioned um, in the last clip we also saw uh, Colossus teaming up with Nightcrawler as well and having one good fight to sort of, um, sort of honour him that way we also saw Armour as well she was great seeing um, like her part of it and sort of seeing how people are affected by Logan's death 
that is what I wanted from this and I'm so glad that it ended on that because that was exactly what I wanted um, and I'm guessing there's going to be maybe more of that in the companion but obviously I don't have time to read that right now so I'm going to find that out some other time when I get time to read it. As for what I think about this comic I do think it was still a good one there was definitely lots of good story in here and I did enjoy all of it I just wish it had maybe been done in a slightly different order so it made a little bit more sense I will say that the artwork was also really Really good it changed artwork quite a few times throughout here but it was still really good artwork as for whether or not this is a good place to start with um x-men comics and specifically wolverine comics definitely not i do not think this is a good one to start with because this is set after m day which is house of m it's also um dealing with the um like youngest mutants or i should say the original x-men turning up in the future because beast brought them forward um it's also dealing with all of this kind of thing you also need to know um like the history of dakin also x-23 saber tooth lady death strike you need to know about mystique and destiny as well because destiny um plays a, uh, plays a little bit of a part in this um madripoor as well weapon x all of this kind of thing so if you are new to wolverine comics maybe avoid this one it is a very good read but it is definitely not one for new people to say the least i just finished old man logan and i would have shown you some bits from it or given you some updates throughout it but to be honest a i read it really really quickly and b i couldn't really sort of comment on anything because or like show you artwork specifically because a lot of it was very very bloody and i didn't really want to show that in case anybody doesn't like blood and gore and stuff like that but this was just Alright, it's based in a alternate universe where the supervillains all teamed up together and basically eradicated the heroes and completely took over the world and we're following uh, Wolverine 50 years later and he is essentially living on a ranch with his family and one day Hawkeye comes along and says I will pay you $500 so you can pay the rent um, to help me transport this stuff across the country and we're just following them as they're going across the country dealing with all the different villains um and who are controlling the different parts of the territory taking them down this kind of thing and it was just all right it was not my favorite i don't think i'll go on to read enemy of the state because i really don't think mark miller is for me i mean i already knew that after reading his ultimate stuff which made me feel physically ill and while it wasn't making me feel physically ill this time there were still just some things in there that i didn't really sort of agree with there was a lot of um well there was a mention of incest in there between bruce and his cousin um jennifer waters there was a lot of like slightly sort of on the nose jokes that I was a little bit not happy with I guess you could say and it was just generally I just have decided I don't like Mark Miller's writing so I am not going to continue on with any enemy of the state so on the whole again if you want to read this one you can probably read it without much issue um as long as you don't mind a lot of blood and gore because there is a lot of that there is also the death of children in here so please be warned about that lots of mentions of like blood and everything else if you want to read it you probably can in terms of continuity and stuff because this is set in a alternate universe so you can probably get away with it in that sense but i would not personally recommend it and i'm only going to give it three stars whereas death of wolverine is getting four so ignore the wet hair i really couldn't be bothered to dry it but anyway i'm now on day three of reading wolverine comics and i've decided to go for the hunt for wolverine and the return for wolverine first before i go on to the weapon x jason aaron run because i realized that the books that i own by J jason aaron tie into the schism event and i don't have time to read that right now so i've decided that i'm gonna put the other stuff that i mentioned earlier to the side and instead i'm gonna focus on the weapon x jason aaron run instead because i've had really really good things about it and i just want to read some jason aaron but anyway first i went for the return of wolverine and also the hunt for wolverine and i'm specifically reading the hunt for wolverine right now because they are the direct sequels to um the death of wolverine because they've buried him like the x-men have buried him and all the rest of it and now his body is missing and obviously this is leading up to his return and all the rest of without giving away too many spoilers but what I want I did want to say is that I love this bit here Kitty Pride is talking at the moment to Tony Stark and Tony's going why are you calling me to say that Logan's missing and all the rest of it you X-Men usually keep to yourselves this kind of thing and she's gone but Logan wasn't just one of the X-Men he was an Avenger and a S.H.I.E.L.D. Oper operative and so much else he touched every corner of our world and we all need to be a part of trying to find him 
And that's what I love about Logan, is that he isn't just one of the X-Men. He's also one of the X-Force as well, which is another sort of offshoot of the X-Men. But he's also an Avenger. He's also a um, member of S.H.I.E.L.D. and all this thing. If you have, like, if like you can practically name any team and he would have been a part of it if it's a superhero team you know he's he's jumped between so many different teams and all the rest of it and i love that about him because i love that he's just not just one of the x-men he's not just one of the x-force he is also joining the avengers he is also joining shield all of this kind of thing he's got friends everywhere and this really really sort of proves it because even though there were only a few people who knew where logan's actual body was there were still loads of people who went to um pay their respects um where they thought his body was because obviously they moved it for security reasons um there was like loads of people who were really really sad about this not just the x-men but other people as well everyone tried to help him when they realized that his healing factor was going all of this kind of thing and i just love seeing the connections that Logan has with this world. He always seems like proves himself or acts like he's like this loner with no friends and all the rest of it, but he really, really is and he is possibly one of the most well connected people in the superhero community in the Marvel Universe. And I just love that about him so much. I just wanted to quickly talk about it. Case in point Daredevil just showed up as well and Daredevil's getting involved because they're like well Madrox is gone at the moment and he was usually our investigator so we're a little bit light on investigators Matt can you help well Daredevil can you help and he's like yep and, uh, like Logan was one of us of course I will and man I love a good mystery I'm like yes we have Daredevil as well I'm really like, I'm really really enjoying this one I will say I love the artwork and also the people who are joining in I'm like bring it to me now i love a good team up to say the least i've also now just read the return of wolverine and it's obviously where wolverine has come back and he is being used by um the bad guys to essentially like kill people and go about their evil business and stuff like this and this was quite fun i will say that i do wish we'd also had um like updates of what the x-men were actually doing during this because um there's a big fight scene between Wolverine and the X-Men and we um, see like the fight but then we don't see the aftermath of that and we also don't see um, them dealing with Tony and everybody else trying to get them back together again and trying to get like Wolverine back and find him and all the rest of it so I do wish we'd had that involved within this return of Wolverine I'm sure it's somewhere probably collected in that big um, Death of Wolverine companion but there we go either way that was still really enjoyable I wouldn't say again it's for new people to like read if you are brand new to Marvel comics or anything because obviously it is the follow-on from Death of Wolverine as well so if you haven't read that at the very least don't read these otherwise none of this will make sense but overall for me I'm giving it four stars I've decided I'm going to start with Patch just because it seemed like quite a quick one and what I will say is that some of the speech in this is overwritten in places where they're just kind of stating the obvious or things that you can infer just from looking at the um panels and stuff like for example this bit here saying i'm putting him down on aleph's bed gimbal bring me bandages and yeah you have the gimbal bring me bandages but i'm just like do we really need to know that it's aleph's bed like he's clearly being put down on a bed i haven't included that bit because there is blood and obviously i don't want to trigger anybody in case um people don't like blood but anyway we don't need to know it's Aleph's bed and stuff like this. So, and there's a few bits throughout here where it is just slightly overwritten. So, yeah, that's slightly annoying, I won't lie. But the rest of it is quite fun. This is set um, at the beginning of Wolverine's time when he was in Madripoor undercover as a guy known as Patch in the Princess Bar. I will say that this isn't looking like it's going to be a good one for people who are new to Wolverine either or Madripoor because there's a lot in here about, um, obviously, Madripoor and things like this and a whole lot of other moving parts in here as well so maybe not the best either for people who are new but for um, me it's reasonably enjoyable so far I will say it's not my favourite but it's reasonably enjoyable and I am intrigued and also Nick Fury's in this one and I always love it when Nick Fury turns up. One thing I will say about this comic though is the um, child Aleph is gender non-conforming and they've just put that in writing in the um actual like speech and storyline and they've said that um aleph is gender non-conforming as well as deaf and blind i cannot actually speak to how well the representation is done but i did want to quickly point out that there is this representation within this book i will say though that there are a lot of um 
like bigoted comments um i will say against um indigenous populations as well as jewish people i will say that they are all done by the bad guys so i just also wanted to quickly point that out that the villains of this piece are making a lot of bigoted comments against indigenous people and also jewish people as well so just thought i'd get that warning out of the way as well just because i like warning people about these things and mentioning trigger warnings whenever possible and now i've just finished that patch run and it was just all right it was set before the original um larry hammer wolverine patch story which was done in 1988 through the 90s if i remember rightly um it's a very very famous run that i admittedly haven't read yet it's on my list um i'm not gonna get into this uh get to it this time i don't think because it's quite long if i remember rightly so don't think i'm gonna be able to get to it this time round. i'll probably read it next time round when i've got some more time to read some wolverine stuff um but yeah this one is not for new people either because there was a lot of things i was going wait what and it's kind of relying on you having knowledge of having read that original run to read this one so yeah definitely not for new people um and yeah it was just all right it was a sort of nice look at wolverine's time in madripoor and what he does um as like a shield agent undercover this kind of thing but in the end it was only a three star read and now i'm finally going to go on to jason aaron's weapon x series and this one um just sounds like a good time this one we're following wolverine trying to stop people from like becoming more weapon x soldiers and things like this and that's always fun and to be honest i'm really sort of pulling towards weapon x at the moment i don't know why but i'm kind of pulling towards weapon x so that is what i'm gonna do and i'm gonna read weapon x i've just finished the first volume and this is really giving me sort of winter soldier vibes in the sense that we're dealing a lot with like espionage and then people being experimented on and used soldiers um for shadowy organizations and all of this kind of thing it's definitely giving me some sort of winter soldier vibes but definitely a lot more violent and a lot more bloody because we are dealing with wolverine here and generally if wolverine is going to be involved there's going to be a lot more blood than say captain america but definitely a really good start definitely enjoying this and going to be continuing on with the series so far but i knew i couldn't go wrong with jason aaron jason aaron has not let me down yet so this was definitely a good one i think to end the wolverine section of this on we seem to have moved on from the weapon x storyline now and now logan seems to have woken up in what appears to be a psychiatric hospital and believes himself to be a psychiatric patient but this is very much not a psychiatric ward it's just being run by some kind of villain or something and he's being used and everybody else is being experimented on and used for horrific experiments and this kind of thing which always gives me the slight sort of ick because obviously that is such a common trope within um like horror things and all the rest of it to have like the um like evil psychiatric doctor and all of this kind of thing which i don't really enjoy because obviously that um sort of has uh, like gone through the rest of pop culture and all the rest of it and it's kind of affected how we view psychiatric help and all the rest of it but the thing that i'm having a bigger problem with is why does the nurse have to be dressed like this why why does this well, this is not necessary can we not can we not do this again please like i know that this was like 2010 but we knew better at this point didn't we this is so normalized in comics and it really drives me up the wall at this point because i'm like why is this necessary it is not necessary to draw women like this why do we have to do it we've thankfully now moved on from the whole psychiatric war bit and all the rest of it and wolverine now has a girlfriend who is a reporter and i just wanted to point out this bit because he's telling her about like the dangers of being in a relationship with him and just knowing him because obviously when you're around wolverine a lot of people wind up dead because people want him dead and you end up in the crossfire and all of this kind of thing and i love that he's going you could be killed or get killed being with me and she's like i could get killed riding the bus and he goes he goes you got some kind of death wish is that it no do you we can't grow old together, even if we wanted to. You'll get older, and I'll, but I'll stay pretty much the same. So I'll be an old woman with a hot young boyfriend. What's the problem? I, I love that kind of exchange between Wolverine and anybody, to be honest. Because it is, one, the reality he lives in. Because he knows he's going to get old around... No, everyone else is... Sorry. And everyone else is going to get old around him. And he's going to stay the same because he is... 
essentially immortal the only people he can sort of rely on being there in hundreds of years time is basically Deadpool which is in some people's minds that's not a good thing <laughs> you know like Wade's gonna be around forever and maybe a couple of other immortal people like Apocalypse and people like this but he's essentially going to be alone so it's um really nice that we're actually seeing these conversations on the page and seeing um the girlfriend in question going no I'm fine with this I'm going ahead with dating you this kind of thing I like that we are getting that warning in him we are having that conversation and also it just kind of reminded me of that moment where the doctor is talking to Rose after they meet Sarah Jane and he's saying you can spend the rest of your life with me but I can't spend the rest of my life with you because obviously he's gonna not age or regenerate and carry on forever or for however long he's going to carry on for whereas humans grow old and die so i just really like that we had that conversation in here and i just wanted to point it out that it kind of reminded me of doctor who in a sense this is now jump forward again a little bit further and it turns out around this time that uh captain america was dead and now he's come back to life again and um him and logan are going on a pub crawl around different time zones and different countries and things like this because they're old friends because they knew each other back in world war Two. this kind of thing they've known each other for literally centuries and i just want to point out this bit here which is not the two of them talking it is um kurt nightcrawler he is their designated driver because even though they've got healing factors and super soldier serum and stuff like this so they can't technically get drunk steve was like we're having a designated driver you know this kind of thing because steve is always careful and all the rest of it for good reason and um kurt's uh watching and has just seen someone like come flying out the bar and he's gone that's definitely a fight and scott's gone how many bars did it make uh did you make it to and kurt's gone this is number five and then obviously kurt's gone you said it, we wouldn't make it past two you, that means you owe me twenty dollars scott i love that they place bets like they know logan that well they've placed bets so like they're good friends with him or at least kurt is scott iffy on the friendship front but i love that they placed bets on how long it would take before logan got into a bar fight that's just i love the little details in there of his friendships with people and how they view him and all the rest of it and just i just love the fact they placed a bet i just love the fact they placed a bet just wanted to put that out there i love that they placed a bet so this has now moved on to a whole bunch of death logs which are essentially cyber assassin people are going after a whole bunch of people to stop a massive uprising think terminator essentially massive terminator thing going on and they're like right we've got to go kill captain america and captain america at this point is bucky barnes which is always fun because i love bucky because steve has retired the name captain america after coming back all of this kind of thing and then this has just happened because steve has turned up with reinforcements and i am loving the banter here where peter is quoting um all of the um things lines at him and he's going i'm warning you stop doing that meanwhile luke and danny are <laughs> going remember when we used to get paid for this uh, like those were the days and then jessica's going so logan i hear you've got a girlfriend and stuff like this i just i love seeing all of this mid fight banter it just it just brings me a lot of joy i won't lie and now i've finished the entire uh jason iron weapon x wolverine run and this was just all right it was sort of like telling two halves i really enjoyed the weapon x stuff i really enjoyed oh quite enjoyed anyway the terminate a bit as well because that was quite fun but a lot of it seemed to tie into other stories as well which meant you missed half of it which was kind of annoying there's my one bugbear with comics where everything has to tie into larger events and it means that if you don't read that event at the same time you'll miss half of it and that does annoy me about comics i won't lie so i do wish that there had been more maybe outside of these events so this could be more enjoyable as a standalone but that's just me and that's just how comics work. I can't change it. So that's totally a me problem. But this was all right. I did enjoy, like I said, the Weapon X stuff. I did enjoy as well the final issue as well where Logan is doing one last thing for Nightcrawler. After Nightcrawler has died, don't worry, he does come back because it's Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler always comes back along with everybody else. Nobody stays dead for more than five minutes in these things. So Nightcrawler does come back, but Nightcrawler had died in the last one and it was going through like wolverine remembering his relationship with nightcrawler or elf as he called him and doing this one last thing for him they asked for him to do in his will this kind of thing that was really interesting the first volume was really interesting in this like i said the terminator stuff was great wasn't a fan of the psychiatric stuff and i also didn't really care 
for the girlfriend stuff either even though it did go into the sort of realities of dating Wolverine and stuff it just wasn't really a hundred percent for me in the end so I think I'm going to be giving this collection overall a mixture of three and four stars and that is me done a for today and b with Wolverine solo stuff and tomorrow I'm starting on Deadpool it's now the next day and I've started reading some Deadpool and I've started with Deadpool origins because I mean there's no better place to start than a very sort of condensed very quick sort of origin story and this is being told in the idea that um, someone wants to make Deadpool into a movie, funnily enough, and so he's telling his life story to several different directors and scriptwriters and things like this to see what they think. He's already gotten rid of two of them violently because they were just doing it very, very wrong and he was like, no, you're not telling my story right. Then he's got this one guy who he thinks understands. He's now at the premiere and he's just said this and he's gone, oh God in heaven in charge of all things merciful and just please don't tell me this is Celine Dion because they're making it sort of too over the top funny and not like um, the actual way Wade is and they're doing it wrong and all the rest of it and what's really funny about the Celine Dion line is the fact that Celine Dion did the song Ashes for Deadpool 2 so it's kind of like I love these kind of meta jokes because each chapter in this is also named after a movie and things like this I'm surprised we haven't seen a Ryan Reynolds joke at this point when was this written I don't know I will check in a minute but this must have been around the time that um, like we knew that there was going to be a Deadpool movie maybe before we knew Ryan Reynolds was in it um, I will double check that in a second but I just love that they put this Celine Dion joke in there as well and it could have been a meta joke depending on when this was made or a pre-meta joke that turned out real in the end but I just love Wade's reactions to this he's just like no this is all wrong and this kind of thing it is really good really fun and I'd definitely say so far this is a really good way to sort of um, see how Wade got his powers, this kind of thing, because you're getting it really sort of rapid fire, so if you just want a really quick and easy origin story, this is definitely designed to be that, and it is definitely working that way. And now that I'm done with the origins, I'm going to go right into a um, big run, and I think I'm going to go for the Daniel Way at Deadpool from 2008, just because I've heard that this is a good place to start with, I've heard that a lot of different series actually are good places to start, because with Wade you are less sort of worried about continuity, and more just sort of knowing that he's going to be a little bit annoying and you just kind of run with it this kind of thing so this is going to be fun though I reckon um this one's got the scrolls in as well as you can see from this top bit the corner here this actually um ties in if I remember rightly to secret invasion so that should be interesting because obviously I read that last year so I'm going to start here see what I think see if it's a good place to start for people who are new to Deadpool and sort of see what I think about it. Funny enough this one actually on volume uh, on issue two I mean actually goes a little bit into Wade's past and talking about Weapon X and then also the place where they send their um, failed experiments and things like this so this actually could be read possibly without that origin as well which is really good. Um, this does tie a little bit into Secret Invasion but to be honest at the moment all you really need to know is that the scrolls are shapeshifters and they're trying to take over the earth and that's all you really need to know so far obviously i'll update if there's a little bit more that you need to know or whatever but obviously you can also just read secret invasion there's only like one big volume for it and i actually have the um reading order if i remember rightly linked down below so you can check it out there as well if you want to it's far better than the tv show i will say but yes, yeah, so anyway, this does actually have a brief bit about um, Wade's past as well, if you are intrigued by it. So I'm now up to issue 8, and I will say this is a very enjoyable, if random, series, because we started with Wade dealing with Secret Invasion, he then dealt with zombies, and then also a half-man, half-shark, and now he's being hunted to earn by the Thunderbolts, led by Yelena, who are being controlled by Norman Osborn, so... Um, because it's all part of Dark Rain and things. So I would say it would help if you had knowledge of, say, Secret Invasion, which is where this starts and first leads into, and then also Dark Rain, but it's very much on the periphery of those. Um, so you don't need to know that much, I'd say. Um, it would probably just help to have a general idea of those events that you can easily Google if you do not want to read those full events or whatever you want. I do have reading guides for Secret Invasion Temple. I don't think I have Dark Rain yet. I am working on it. But anyway, there are like um, Google things and also my blog as well. 
for a lot of these events and it's very much on the periphery so you can just kind of read it without that knowledge and just sort of run with it if you want to um but yeah this is still a very enjoyable thing i will say it won't be for everyone because it is quite random and i think wade can be an acquired taste but i'm still quite enjoying myself so far and yelena's just turned up and i love yelena so very excited to see those two fight this scene here is taken word for word and put in Deadpool 1 and I love that so much. The attention to detail they put into the Deadpool movies is almost second to none to be honest and the fact that they put this in nearly word for word just brings me so much joy and I just wanted to quickly point it out. This is now starting to tie a little bit more into the X-Men going to a place called Utopia where they're all essentially trying to be safe there and away from everybody else because of all the prejudice they face and everything and Wade has gone I want to join the X-Men and they've all gone hell no <laughs> essentially and um, then Logan's gone well actually he's too dangerous to essentially let loose and just be unsupervised but he's also too dangerous to be here but it's the lesser of two of the evils to maybe let him be on Utopia and so they've sent Don a Domino over to go and get him and Wade's gone I'll do it on one condition and that condition is that he wants to wear his X-Men uniform that he made and it looks like this. He's even put his name on the back of it and I'm just like, oh wait. <laughs> like I love that he's made his own X-Men uniform and all the rest of it. I just, I love Wade so much. I will say that this series in general is generally working for me but I kind of like having a more sort of solid narrative running through these things and this is more sort of like weird two three issue long sort of one shots which kind of works for wade but i was hoping for maybe a little bit more of an overarching storyline i don't know but i am loving these interactions he's having with various different characters and all of this kind of thing i'm loving his one liners he's also arguing with himself a lot at the moment which is quite interesting to read this kind of thing but i'm also loving these kind of things where he's made his own x-men uniform it just brings me joy it brings me ridiculous amounts of joy to read. I've now read up to issue 25 of this run and while it's been fun and reading all about Wade trying to become a hero, interacting with the X-Men, Spider-Man, Hitmonkey who is literally a monkey assassin, uh, Norman Osborn, all of these kind of things, I've decided I want to read something with maybe a little bit more of an overarching plot to it because this feels more like a series that you can dip in and out of when you fancy it which is nothing wrong with that whatsoever especially if you don't have that much time or you don't want to read anything that is like massively bogged down with a huge storyline or anything else um it's still a good run i definitely recommend it but for me at the moment i think i'm going to leave this and i'm going to go read something else for a little while because i just want something with a little bit more plot to it at the moment and that is a lot to ask with wade i know but there is a couple that i do want to read that i know have a bit more of a plot like deadpool kills the marvel universe i have read that before but i want to give it a reread re and i think i've got just enough time to give that a reread today so that is what i'm going to go on to um in terms of whether um this run of deadpool by daniel way is a good one to read um it definitely is especially if you're not used to massive great overarching comic book series or anything else this is a nice one to dip in and out of maybe read um, like two or three issues of each mini storyline and then go away do something else and then come back to it when you fancy it this kind of thing it's definitely um, good if you're a new reader as well because you get a really good um, sense of who Wade is, his powers, um, his uh, murk with a mouth reputation and everything definitely shines through throughout here. This kind of thing, um, it does have a lot of talk of various different events as well and different um, characters show up. Like you see the Avengers at points, you see Spider-Man obviously. Like I said, Hitmonkey turns up but you don't really need to know anything about Hitmonkey. I've never read anything about Hitmonkey before and I was fine with this um there's bits that tie into larger events like secret invasion like dark rain but again you can still read these very very easily because they're very much on the periphery of this there are points you will miss because they are in other comics that sort of work as like a tie into each series this kind of thing which is a little bit annoying but you don't really lose any of the storyline or anything else so i think you can read this as a new reader and um get away with it quite easily and still know what's going on and follow it quite well it's still very fun 
found very amusing um all of those kind of things so yeah i definitely recommend it as a, um something to read for a new reader i'm currently only two issues into this run by jerry duggan and josh person i think that's his name i'll write it down here so you can read it but um this is from 2012 and i'm really really enjoying this so far and i definitely think this is a pretty good one to start with as well because you actually get right at the beginning of the first couple of pages a sort of quick rundown of what Wade's powers are and things like this and then you're kind of are set to uh, like ready to go after that as long as you know his powers and you kind of know that he's the fourth wall breaking Merc with a mouth that's all you really need to know and you can just dive straight into this one. This one specifically is following the storyline that a necromancer has essentially brought back to life loads of dead presidents to kind of unite the country because America is very very divided and things like this which feels very on the nose for a comic that was written in 2012 but there we go. Um, and S.H.I.E.L.D. which is like the big government agency of the um, MCU which is generally the good guys like Fury and Maria Hill those types of people then also the Avengers, the X-Men, the Fantastic Four and people like this also can't be seen to be um, fighting these presidents because of various reasons so what they've done is they sent in Deadpool because Deadpool can get away with these things and it's all sort of gone from there this is really fun so far I definitely think it's a good one to maybe start with because like I said you go very very quickly through his powers right at the beginning and as long as you know he's the merc with the mouth you can just sort of dive into this one um i will say that doctor strange is about to show up so you may need some knowledge of him but i reckon it will probably be as long as you've seen like the movies you'll be fine to read this one um it's not tying into any larger continuity so far either which is also fantastic so if you are brand new to comics and you just want to read some deadpool so far this is looking like a good one to go for uh was there anything else i was going to say yes also if you are uh, not um like that well versed in previous american presidents some jokes and stuff will go over your head because they're going over mine because as someone who was brought up in england we never really sort of studied the american presidents or anything so some of this is admittedly going straight over my head um in terms of the references and i'm not recognizing some of these presidents on site and stuff like this or um from stuff like this but and that's just a minor thing everything else is going really really well so far and it's really really funny i definitely feel like this is um a really good um set of writers for deadpool they really get that kind of um random humor without it being too over the top random i'd say and they're doing the quips and everything else really really well i will say though that this does include animal death including the death of an elephant and things like this so please be warned about that and there is a lot of blood and a lot of gore so Actually, what I'm going to say is that basically any Deadpool comic I'm going to mention from now on will have a lot of blood and gore into it. So if that isn't your thing, I'll leave a timestamp here as well so you can skip over into the Deadpool and Wolverine team up section of this vlog because obviously not everybody does blood and gore on things. Um, but yeah, this does have a lot of that and it also has a lot of um, animal death. So if that is not your thing either, maybe skip the first few issues of this. But it's fine for me that it's not something that sort of triggers me or anything so I'm really enjoying myself and I'm going to go back to reading because like I said Doctor Strange has just turned up and quite frankly I'm always here for Doctor Strange to appear in any comic so I'm very excited to see where this is going to go. Wade literally distracted one of the presidents by dressing as Marilyn Monroe. Just this is so Wade. This is so wait. This is exactly what I wanted from a Deadpool comic. Like this whole thing is exactly what I wanted. Sadly, Doctor Strange is now gone, but there we go. He was still absolutely brilliant in his part. I love seeing him and everything else. But everything about this is just pure Wade Wilson, and I am loving it so so much. I'm loving this a lot more than I did the Daniel Way stuff, to say the least. This feels a lot less lol random and more sort of the Wade I know and love which I absolutely love this is this is working so well for me and now I've just got to the point where um in this run where Deadpool is going to be teaming up with Wolverine and Captain America so I'm putting that on pause so I can read it next week as part of my sort of team up selection of this reading vlog so I'm going into another solo run right now which is Kelly Thompson's because I've suddenly realized I've not read 
any women so far this uh, vlog has been mainly men and one non-binary author and I want to read some women so I'm going to start with Kelly Thompson and then tomorrow I'm going to read Alyssa Wong but for now we're going into Kelly Thompson stuff and what really excites me about this is that Kelly Thompson wrote Jeff the Land Shark and Jeff the Land Shark is one of my all-time favorite Marvel comics I absolutely adore it Jeff is one of my all-time favorite characters so I'm really excited to see what she's going to do and what chaos she's going to bring it to dead Deadpool. I'm so far two issues in and we've already had some cameos from Gwenpool and also Elsa Bloodstone who's starting to become a um, like one of the sort of main characters. We've also had Craven the Hunter and Jeff the Landshark has joined Wade on Monster Island because this is all about Wade basically becoming the king of Monster Island which is essentially Staten Island and the humans want the monsters off the land and the, and the monsters are like but this is our home kind of thing so it's an interesting situation but I love that we've had this many cameos already and we're only two issues in. Um, I should have guessed that Kelly Thompson was going to bring in um, Jeff the Landshark because obviously she writes Jeff the Landshark but it was so nice to see him. He's one of the main characters of this or at least he's featured quite heavily in this. I wouldn't say you need to know anything about Jeff to read this um, because Jeff is essentially just a tiny dog sized shark that walks on land. And yeah, he's just the cutest little thing ever. I absolutely adore him. And that's all you really need to know about him. And then Elsa Bloodstone, um, as well as Gwenpool and also Craven the Hunter. I've had little sort of mini, mini bio boxes as well um, involved in each of the pages when they've shown up. So you kind of get who they are, but essentially... Um, Gwenpool, like they say, is very much like Deadpool, but not as much as you think she will be, in the sense that she is, um, someone who can also break the fourth wall and is very aware of the fact that she's in a comic, um, and she's also a bit of a mercenary, but a not very good one, essentially, um, she comes from our world, she is essentially just, just imagine her as me, that's what I'd say, I, like, Gwenpool is me on so many levels, it's unbelievable, only she's found her way into the Marvel Universe, which explains her then Elsa Bloodstone is essentially a monster hunter and I adore Elsa Bloodstone she was in the well werewolf by night um special um thing that they did last Halloween Halloween before a couple of years ago when they did um werewolf by night that's Elsa Bloodstone as well in there and then Craven the hunter is essentially just a really evil bad guy who's usually a spider-man bad guy and he hunts monsters and he's now hunting the monsters on monster island essentially so there's a little bit of context you need for this i'd say for some of these characters but a lot of it is just explained in those little text boxes and those characters quickly disappear apart from craven the hunter apart from craven the hunter but to be honest i mean you kind of get who craven is quite quickly from just reading this because he's very much clearly the bad guy he's trying to hunt monsters and try and hunt way down all of this kind of thing so I think this is a reasonably good one to go for if you are new to Deadpool I'd maybe say have maybe a little bit more knowledge of the Marvel Comics universe first just to sort of like make sure you've got the full um like context and stuff but to be honest Deadpool really works as like a contextless thing most of the time so I'd say you could probably get away with it but it may help if you want to have a little bit of knowledge. This is set during the current era so Wade has just tried to get onto um, the island of Krakoa because he's like well technically I'm a mutant because my healing power, uh, power came from a mutant specifically it came from Wolverine and he's like and because my movies everyone thinks I'm a mutant so technically if enough people believe it that technically makes me a mutant because it makes it true and all of this kind of thing so he's just trying to get on there and they've just had like a level one alert so everyone's come to um, sort it out on Krakoa and Elise just gone well we've got to get rid of him but can we keep the shark he's absolutely adorable and some killjoy I think is Wolverine's gone no we cannot Iliana and I'm like I'm with Illy keep the damn uh, shark he's adorable yesterday I finished the Kelly Thompson run and you could tell that it had been cancelled essentially so it was kind of wrapped up very very quickly but I still think it was done pretty well um I did enjoy it quite a lot I enjoyed the humor of it the artwork was very good I obviously enjoyed seeing Jeff the land shark as one of the main characters of this that was wonderful because I love that character so much he's absolutely one of my favorite Marvel characters ever I've said it before but Jeff Jeff owns my heart to say the least I love him so much so it was great to see him interacting with Deadpool a lot by the way if you can hear that fan noise it is my laptop whenever I use iMovie it just decides to 
make the fan go really loud for some reason but there we go anyway i just really enjoyed this i will say there are a lot of fart jokes in here as well so if that's not your thing maybe avoid this one but overall i had a good time with it and i'm giving it four stars and now for my final day of deadpool reading i'm going to be going on to the Alyssa wong run i think and then next week i'll be covering uh wolverine and saber tooth which i have one um issue for that i need to read deadpool core and then the general deadpool and wolverine team up so i'm gonna end with Alyssa wong because i've had amazing things about her work and we'll go from there so gonna get reading i've only read one issue of this so far and i can already say that this is probably not going to be a good one to read if you are completely brand new to marvel comics because this is dealing with like dark arc it's also dealing with carnage we're talking about krakoa as well things like this so if you are completely brand new to marvel comics and this is uh, and you think that this may be your first ever one maybe not this one because there's a lot going on there's a lot of mentions of other things you've got to know a bit about carnage as well and like why that's so dangerous to wade everything else or why it's so dangerous to basically everyone and why carnage is not the symbiote you want whatsoever at any point so you should probably know about that you should also probably know about doc ock what i will say though is that i am enjoying how wade is annotating the um sort of intro page because at the beginning of each um issue they're giving you an update of who wade is and then what he's been up to in the previous issue because each issue usually comes out about once a month and obviously between that month you can figure out what's happened so they like to give a very quick recap of what's previously happened and i really like that he's annotating everything also he's now got a crush as well on valentine so yeah i'm loving everything to do with wade and valentine right now and also if you are brand new to marvel comics don't read this if you are semi up to date with marvel comics and you've just never read any um deadpool before you can read this i'd say so that's the distinction i'm making so far two things first of all i'm loving seeing um what goes on in wade's head whenever valentine flirts with him and things like this i'm loving all of these little sort of little sort of romantic fantasies he's having they're all really really fun and then also i love this moment here where um valentine's telling him that his backpack is full of drugs which is keeping the symbiote inside of him under control essentially and the kid's got drugs and <laughs> wade's gone and none for you gretchen wieners like brilliant mean girls reference right there he's already referenced a few other things throughout this but I wanted to quickly mention the Mean Girls one. And now I've just finished Alyssa Wong's run and quite frankly I wanted this to be longer because this was so much fun. I really really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed um, Deadpool and Valentine's relationship and seeing it slowly grow together. They did admittedly fall for each other quite quickly but that wasn't really a problem in my mind. I still really enjoyed seeing them together. I really enjoyed as well seeing them trying to take down the assassins and all of this kind of thing i also really enjoyed seeing the giant venom based dog symbiote dog thing that was great lady deathstrike was great in this as well and this is just generally a really fun run i would say that you need some knowledge of the marvel universe in general because obviously they're dealing with lady deathstrike you've also got the symbiotes and it's tying in a little bit with king in black and all of that stuff um we are also dealing as well with um various other bits like this like the fact that deadpool has a daughter i haven't actually mentioned that before but deadpool does actually have a daughter that he doesn't see that often because he wants to keep her safe this kind of thing so you see her very very briefly um things like this so i'd say it's not the best for someone who is completely and utterly brand new to marvel comics but if you are used to marvel comics and you've read a fair few of them or at the very least if you've seen the movies you could probably get away with reading this one but if you are completely and utterly brand new you know nothing about the marvel universe whatsoever maybe stay away from this but personally i really enjoyed it i definitely ship deadpool and valentine and i want more from them and, I, and i'm giving it four stars and now i'm going to go on to rob liefeld's deadpool bad blood and badder blood because these are some of the um latest sort of one shot sort of very short limited runs of deadpool and they are written by rob liefeld who is the creator of deadpool and i haven't actually read anything by the creator of deadpool yet so I should probably do that i've only got a few hours left to actually read some deadpool comics before i'm going to be going on to some um like team up stuff so 
I think I'm going to end it with Rob Liefeld, see what I think. So that is what I'm going to do next. I've just finished Bad Blood and I'm going to read Bad Blood next week because it turns out Wolverine's in that and obviously I want to keep all my um, like team ups for next week. Um, but this was just a write up. Again, wouldn't say this is for anyone who is new to um, Deadpool or anything because it's talking about Weapon H um, not Weapon X, D uh, Department H, which is where Wade got his powers. All this kind of thing. There's a lot of sort of Deadpool knowledge that you need. And also it's just an all right comic it is definitely not my favorite in the world um but one other thing i want to quickly talk about is for context right now it is friday the 19th of july which is actually funny enough benedict cumberbatch's birthday but besides the point well semi besides the point because i think he's going to be in the movie as doctor strange we have now seen the portals and then ryan reynolds as of last night posted two pictures of sling rings um on his instagram story and i'm like well that's either going to be doctor strange or it's going to be wong i reckon it's going to be wong but i'm holding out for stephen because i love him as well and he's my favorite but there we go it would make my absolute life to see deadpool interact with doctor strange i won't lie but besides the point that'll happen eventually i'll be happy with wong as well because i love wong anyway Another trailer has just dropped, it's the final trailer for the movie and this is now going to contain spoilers for the movie. So if you have not seen the movie, I'm going to put a timestamp here so you can just skip this part because I'm going to talk about the movie in terms of the trailers. So now I'm just going to give you a very quick countdown so you can skip to the next bit if you do not want to read this. So 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, we're now in spoiler zone. But they've just posted this trailer and in the trailer, X-23 turns up which is fantastic i love x23 x23 is one of my favorite characters i've loved her since wolverine like since logan came out and i discovered her as a character because when that came out i was very much a baby marvel comic fan i was definitely just like a movie fan at the time i was just getting into the comics and i have loved her ever since i have absolutely adored her and i've wanted her back for the last seven years literally since logan came out i've been like right okay scrap redoing wolverine like hugh jackman logan all the rest of it do not bring him into the mcu just use x23 she's right there daphne keen is right there she has said for years she wants back in again just use her and i've been shouting about this for years now i've been shouting about this for a very 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 long time and now she's going to be in the movie which is fantastic i've wanted this for so long like i said i've shouted about this everywhere about wanting her in this movie but i wanted to be surprised that's what i'm getting at i wanted to be surprised for this i did not want to know this a week in advance or i should actually say five days in advance because i'm seeing it on wednesday night going into thursday at the first possible showing at midnight um because i am that conscious of spoilers i do not like getting spoilers for my marvel movies or anything else i like to be completely surprised going into them i don't like knowing anything um and i have a real problem with spoilers and they've just spoiled a massive cameo like i understand that there's going to be far bigger cameos in this you know i've heard um sebastian stan has been talking about the fact that he was um that his personal trainer is also ryan reynolds's personal trainer so he's been trying to get some information out of him because obviously he wants to know and his personal trainer was saying that he was really surprised by how many really big hollywood actors are in this movie and he was saying at one point he walked in and there was like five or six massive hollywood actors in the um in the room about to go film their bits so you know that's really exciting and everything else but i didn't want to know this bit i didn't want to know x23 i wanted to be surprised like i was when i saw deadpool 2 and we saw um him going around the um x mansion and the 70s x-men are just behind them and they close the door very quietly so we can't see them i remember that moment and gasping in surprise my hand went to my face and one of my rings smacked me in the to uh, like in the teeth and i was in pain for the rest of the movie but i didn't care because i was so surprised or at the end of that movie where wolverine turns up right at the very end and it's a flashback to wolverine origins and wade's doing that whole one day you're going to put down the claws and then a few years later your old buddy wade's going to come along and ask you to pick them back up again say yes i've paraphrased that but that moment i remember watching that moment for the first time and tearing up because it was wolverine and it was obviously wade speaking to all of us there saying say yes pick the claws back up again you know and stuff like this that was the exciting thing for me um because i didn't know that was coming or like um i mean it's the exact same situation as multiverse of madness because the same thing happened there and the illuminati were spoiled because people saw it beforehand and they just spoiled it from the press screenings and the trailer did um like spoil the fact that patrick stewart was going to be in the movie back as professor x and i mean i lost my 
I lost my mind at that point. I saw that trailer and I did lose it, but I was fine with that because that trailer was like six months in advance of the movie, you know? So I was kind of like, oh, well, Patrick Stewart's going to be in this movie. This is really exciting. I'd known that there was going to be rumour and stuff like this, or there was rumour at the time that we were going to see the um, Illuminati and everything. So I was like, oh, right, we'll probably see Charles. So exciting times. And then that was confirmed. Life made brilliant. I was jumping for joy, quite literally. And I had my uncle on the phone, and I was literally shouting down the phone that Charles Xavier was back, and because my uncle is also a massive nerd for these things. So I was telling him this you know but when it's a week before the trailer uh, like before the actual movie comes out can we stop spoiling things seriously like it's bad enough when the press do it it's worse when we're a week before the film comes out you don't even watch the trailer but then it all gets spoiled anyway because people watch the trailer obviously and then they start posting about it because they're excited and i'm like that could have waited you could have left that tiny cameo from that trailer out of the like you could have just left that and not put it in the trailer so i'm annoyed i'm annoyed about it i'm really annoyed but this does mean i get to add next week to my team ups list wolverine teaming up with wolverine which is great because i love wolverines and i love the wolverines and i love um logan and laura teaming up and everything else that's all exciting but i'm just like that couldn't have waited seriously that could have it couldn't have waited but anyway rant over I'm going to go read the next um, Deadpool run, which is the latest one that is currently still coming out. There are three issues available, so I'm going to go read that and calm down a little bit. But I'm just really annoyed because I didn't want to know that was coming. I just wanted to get that out there. First three issues of the 2024 Deadpool run, Ren, and these were actually quite fun. Um, these are the only ones that I have available to me right now because they're the only ones available on Marvel Unlimited. But this is a really fun run so far. We are following Wade as he is trying to do better for his daughter. He's also broken up with Valentine, which is really sad because I really wanted to see more of the two of them together. But hopefully Valentine will come back and they'll make it up again by the end of the series because I would really enjoy that. Um, and he's just trying to, but anyway, Wade is just trying to do better for his daughter and trying to make a business of well being a merc but there we go he's trying to do better in that sense he's also trying to look after princess you know the giant venom dog thing that he's called princess all of this kind of thing and it's really fun so far i wouldn't say again it's the best one to go for if you are new to deadpool comics At the very least you need to read the Alyssa wong run for valentine and also princess to make sense it also helps to have some knowledge of deadpool and the fact that he has a daughter as well things like this there are a couple of things that have tied into other runs as well but they are clearly clearly signposted and also i got away with not reading those to read this so in that sense you should be fine but i would say that at the very least if you're going to read this one you should read Alyssa wong's run first because it ties into that quite well but apart from that i've been enjoying it so far and i'm giving it four stars we're now officially in deadpool and wolverine week which means i'm going to be starting on all of the team up stuff and what i'm going to do is start with the jerry duggan run i think which is what i started last week and i stopped when we got to the um team up issues because i wanted to save it for this week so i think i'm going to start there and go from there because i know I really enjoy that run and I've been enjoying that run and I trust Jerry Duggan so that is where I'm going to start and I'm really excited I won't lie I'm really excited because we're finally at the week I've been waiting for this for two years and it, we're finally in the week but anyway I'm not going to really be fangirling about that right now because I've got some reading to do so I'm going to start with the Jerry Duggan run and then go from there so Let's get going with the Jerry Duggan run. So far, Logan and Steve have only turned up very, very briefly in this. I'm hoping they're going to show up again soon because I've heard really good things about this being a team up and all the rest of it. But um, Wade has had to go back to Weapon X and everything. Or oh, they've kidnapped him back to Weapon X, I should say. And um, they're essentially telling him that, they're, that they've never really stopped monitoring him and they've been stealing his organs, all of this kind of thing. And it's just been revealed um, in this one that Wade has a daughter and... Um, that they're saying that if you don't do as we say, you're never going to see your family again, this kind of thing. And Wade's talking to Agent Preston, who's in his head, um, because that's where her consciousness is. And she's saying, like, she'll never, um, had any record of you fathering a child and everything else. Um, like, we knew everything about you and this kind of thing. And Wade's saying her name is Eleanor 
and um, like a few years ago her mother like um, was like a child support and everything and Wade says I can remember um, I can kind of remember laughing her off I told Carmelita that she was running a scam and it was impossible for her baby that her baby could be mine she was too beautiful and I'm like oh Wade like obviously it that is such a damning way of him, how he sees himself and things like this and it's like oh Wade like obviously we know Eleanor is his um maybe not at this point but obviously we know because I've read further comics where obviously he sees his Ellie bear and everything else but that just really hit me in the feelings I just had to quickly share that because that just really hit me in the feelings quite hard I've now just finished The Good, The Bad and The Ugly Run. It was um, one volume, so about five, six issues, I think it was, in the end. And um, Logan and Captain America did turn up in the end, so it was actually a team up. And this was pretty good in the end. I think it did a really good job of wrapping up the storyline that Wade's been going through for this run, talking about him um, being kidnapped and experimented on, this kind of thing. It also goes back to... Um, Wade's time in a weapon plus and what happened to him um with him getting his powers this kind of thing um I will say though that this one comes with a lot of trigger warnings um and it's definitely not going to be for people who are completely brand new to Deadpool I think because it does do a lot with talking about what happened to Wade in the past um it does do a pretty good job of explaining it I will say but it may be an idea to have at least a basic understanding of um, what happened to Wade in Weapon Plus and things like this before you read this but in terms of the trigger warnings there is a lot of them in terms of talking about families being held hostage for um against other people so they did what the um, government wanted this is all set in North Korea by the way as well um, so there was a lot of criticism of North Korea and things like this so um, so I'll point that out as well I'm not sure how I feel about that at the moment but I'll have to think on that a bit more there is also a lot of um, execution of families as well including um, children so please be warned about that there's also human experimentation a lot of that in this um, there's obviously death, there's guns, there's explosions, all of this kind of thing. So if any of that is triggering to you, please avoid this because there is a lot of that in this comic. It's definitely worth a read if you don't mind those types of things and you aren't triggered by those types of things. But I just wanted to point it out because there is a lot of that within this comic and I don't want anyone to be triggered. Um, and also I should say as well that this does include the presumed death of a daughter and the grief that comes with that Wade does think he has lost Ele Eleanor and we obviously know from reading other um runs specifically like the Kelly Thompson and Alyssa Wong um stuff that well specifically the Alyssa Wong stuff I should say we know that Eleanor is alive and that's like and that's obviously fantastic news and everything else but by the end of this volume you don't know that and Wade is operating on the idea that he has lost his daughter without ever really knowing her so there's a lot of grief to go with that as well so please be warned about all of that I don't want anyone to be um, triggered by that or anything so I just wanted to warn you about that right now I've now just moved on and finished the decoy and this was a pretty fun one I will say it's a pretty good one as well if you want something very very quick and you don't really know much about Deadpool and Wolverine but you want to read something like team up based because this is a uh, very very quick and very very easy to read I'd say it probably helps if you know a little bit about Wade and a little bit about Logan and possibly Gene as well but apart from that you can probably read this without much issue and I'm going to be giving it I think four stars. I've now started Deadpool versus Old Man Logan because obviously I read Old Man Logan last week and was saving this bit for this week obviously and what a way to open this. This is literally opened with the two of them running away from things and then having like a minivan drop on them and a few other things while um, Logan's trying to shout away going I told you not to double dare them and now they've got a plane hitting them and I'm just like what a way to open this and not uh, like immediately getting you into the idea that you're about to see some apt absolute abject chaos. I absolutely love this because this is really going into just how much Wolverine can sense and how heightened his senses are. I don't think we go into this like as often as we really really should with Wolverine comics because he has got such a heightened sense of smell and like obviously hearing and all the rest of it so it's really interesting to see how that works in his brain and how he interprets everything and how he can 
track people that far i just find this really really interesting and i'm really glad this has been put into here um in terms of whether or not this is a good one to maybe start with as a team up i wouldn't I mean, in some ways, yes, because it gives you uh, right at the beginning a sort of lot, a sort of little mini catch up of what's happened, and the fact that it's old man Logan and Wade was recently an Avenger until he killed Coulson. Not entirely sure what happened there. Haven't read that one yet, but things like this. So in that sense, you could probably read this. You just really have to know that at the moment, Logan is from the future and he's an old man, and him and Wade don't really get along, and Wade is being white essentially so in that sense actually you could probably read this without much knowledge to be fair because i wouldn't say at the moment three volume uh, like three issues in you really need that much knowledge as to old man logan's story or anything like this you just really need to know he's from the future overall this was quite fun i will say that you probably need to at the very least know um about wade's daughter so i would say possibly read the jerry duggan run before this just so you've got a little bit about um eleanor and things like this um just for one particular scene but apart from that, you'd be perfectly fine reading this without, like, Old Man Logan or anything else. It is a very good one, I'd say, if you just want to dive right into a Deadpool and Wolverine comic and just hit the ground running. And overall, it is pretty fun. I will say there's quite a lot of blood in this one and talk of kidnapping, human experimentation, all of this kind of thing, which you can generally expect from literally any Deadpool or Wolverine comic. And if they're teaming up together, you will see a lot more blood and all the rest of it because of just their backstories and the type of characters they are but overall that was quite a fun one and i'm giving it four stars i'm currently four issues into the deep end and so far this is just basically wade and logan trying to beat the hell out of each other with explosions guns swords knife claws all the rest of it you know all of the general stuff and now that uh, Wade has actually captured Logan and all the rest of it, now they're actually talking. But what I wanted to quickly say is that I really don't like this look on Wade. Because this artwork to me just makes him look like an old man. And that's not who he is. Like, he's supposed to have a lot of facial scarring and stuff. And this to me just looks more like he's been drawn to look like an old man. So I just wanted to say I'm not entirely fond of this look of Wade's face at the moment. Everything else is going quite well for me in terms of the two of them just beating each other up because sometimes you just want something where there's not much plot or anything else um, and you just want to see these two fight each other because sometimes it's just great to watch two anti-heroes fight each other to see who will win so um, in that sense this is a pretty good one. I would also say you don't really need much knowledge of this either further than the fact that essentially both of them are immortal and that's about it at the moment obviously um if that changes i'll let you know but i'm like four issues in at the moment and nothing really is sort of screamed out to me you need previous knowledge so if you are looking i think um in terms of just something that's really quick to read and also just about the two of the, these two duking it out with a bit of talking at the end definitely give this a go but obviously i'll update you again when i've finished so i finished yesterday the uh deep end and in the end i've decided it's not a really good comic anyway um it was by daniel way and it's only available on like marvel unlimited it's not even listed on goodreads so um yeah it's not like something everyone can read because like i said it's only available on marvel unlimited so if you don't have a subscription you can't read it but this one was just it just didn't work for me in the end because i thought it was going to turn out everything that was happening was in like the danger room or something and they were just doing some sort of like training montage or something and they really weren't and it turns out wade was like hired to kill logan and things like this and i'm like that felt really out of character because i don't think wade would go after logan in that sense and take money to kill logan you know because quite frankly it's impossible or damn near impossible and like i know he's killed him before in like deadpool goes the marvel universe and things like this but it just felt really out of character and i also wouldn't recommend it for new readers either because there's a lot in there about dakin as well and you need the context of dakin being obviously logan's son and what happened with him and the winter soldier and why bucky was there because bucky also turned up in this um which was great because i love bucky but i was just a little bit like 
by the end of it so I would not recommend it in the end. I've kind of decided to sort of jump around a little bit with um, my reading now because I've got quite a few one shots, a couple of like longer stuff as well but I'm just kind of jumping around and I've decided to go for the 1995 Wolverine annual where Deadpool is supposed to turn up so far it's just Wolverine and Kurt aka yeah, Nightcrawler but I just want to point out this bit here like how 90s is this like speech here with um wolverine going like we've got, um only thing left to do is track down all of these ugly dudes and go to claw city on them i hope you brought a, a six pack of butt kick with you i'm just like oh my god that is so cheesy 90s it's unbelievable i just felt myself cringe <laughs> like i understand it was the 90s this is actually written the year before i was born but i'm just like the cringe like proper cringe moment here I'm just kind of internally wincing a little bit like oh that's cheesy so Wade eventually turned up in the second story of that annual and it was just all right it was not my absolute favorite and to be honest I've read another one and already forgotten what happened in that previous one so that kind of tells you how much it stuck in my mind I've then also now read another annual or I'm halfway through another annual and I've just read the Deadpool and Wolverine team up where they're essentially Wade is trying to kill a werewolf while Wolverine is trying to save him and it was alright, it was quite fun. I wouldn't call it like the greatest thing in the world but it was quite fun and now I'm on to the second half of the annual because most annuals have um, two stories in them and this um, second one uh, Logan seems to be playing cards with She-Hulk, Nick Fury and a few others and he's just had to take um, Fury's car to go get more beer and he's just said this, man I hate these shield cars, I feel like Marty freaking fly and I'm like Top tier reference, I I love a Back to the Future reference. Obviously, I'm a massive McFly fan. I'm a massive fan of Back to the Future. So, just wanted to quickly point that one out. I've now moved on to Deadpool and Wolverine Slash em Up. And this is an Infinity comic, meaning it's, meaning it's essentially infinitely scrolling. And you don't have to, like, page turn or anything. You just scroll this way. And this is a, a, um, another one on Unlimited. So, if you don't have un Unlimited, it's not currently available anywhere else. But... So far this is fun, essentially um, Wade is trying to steal something, Wolverine is trying to protect it, you know, the basic story and the guards are all here as well and they were originally um, the ones that Wade was going to be um, fighting against until Wolverine turned up and now they're just watching it and this guy's just gone, I gotta say this is extremely entertaining, Kenji, get us some popcorn and I'm just like, that is exactly what like, that is what I want to see from guards, you know? This is what I want to see them going, this is quite entertaining, I need some snacks to watch this. You know, I just, I love it when stuff like this happens, um, and you actually see the guards going, this could be quite fun to watch, because let's be honest, watching Logan and Wade fight is quite fun, because they're both unkillable, they're both incredibly highly trained, and everything else. It's just really fun to watch and see which one's going to, like outdo each other on which one's gonna win in a fight you know it's just really good fun and I really like this bit here. Wade here being essentially my reaction to finding out that Deadpool and Wolverine were teaming up in the MCU. I love these little text boxes saying such and such happened in previous comic because it one of the signposts where I need to go read next or when I get five minutes probably not today because I'm not reading any Loki at the moment. I may end up reading some after I've seen Deadpool and Wolverine if he turns up but that's another matter entirely but also it just informs you of bits you didn't even know. I mean Loki claimed to be Deadpool's father in Deadpool 1997. I mean that would make a strange amount of sense to be honest which scares me a little bit especially considering Loki is now the god of stories and Wayne knows he's in a story and everything else that that makes a strange amount of sense obviously it's not true but that makes a strange amount of sense and now I really need to go read 1997 Deadpool because or at least get up to that point I think I read some of it did I maybe I think that maybe the Joe Kelly run anyway I didn't read far enough if I did read it earlier this week because I didn't see that bit. Slash em Up is really good fun. I would say it's quite a good one to read if you are brand new to Marvel Comics and everything else because you don't really need to know anything. It sort of covers everything you need to know within the story and you just need to know that Wade and Logan basically have very good healing factors so they recover from gunshot wounds and all the rest of it very, very quickly. And it's a really good fun, I will say. It is a really good fun one. I'm giving it four stars because I just had a really good time reading it. It was just, it was nice and quick. It hit the spot. It was exactly what I wanted. And I'm giving it four stars. So 
that's a pretty good one to go for. I'm now, um, I think two, three issues into Bad of Blood and I'm actually enjoying this a lot more than I was expecting to after the first one because this is actually going reasonably well for me actually. This is focusing on Wade, um, after the events of Bad Blood he's called in a Wolverine and um, a Cable which is always fun. I love seeing the three of them um, together because they are such badasses and I just really enjoy seeing them together. Their dynamics are really interesting. Um, I will say that this one, Wade has essentially been separated from the group and he's landed himself in Killville which is a sort of version of Murder World and to be honest, you don't really know, need to know much about that, further than that is run by a villain called Arcade who creates these big arcade places and send, like kidnaps heroes and sends them in there to fight for survival, this kind of thing. Only this time this is being run by a sister and you can probably get away with not knowing much else apart from that. Um, at the moment I think um, and you can probably just dive into this one you may be a little bit confused at some points but it's still working quite well for me it's also um, featuring Wade currently fighting Venompool which is a variant on Deadpool who got um, attached to the um, or bonded I should say with um, the Venom symbiote so they're currently battling each other like Deadpool versus Venompool and that is really really interesting really really fun um, I'd say you possibly um maybe need a little bit of knowledge about venom but i think as long as you've seen the movies you should be fine on that one as well so at the moment this is working out a quite good for me and b i reckon this could be a good one to go for if you are new to marvel comics but obviously we shall see with further issues i've now read batter blood and this one's quite fun i will say um you can probably read this without any sort of knowledge though it would help to know a bit about murder world arcade like i said and also a bit about cable just so you've got a bit of context for a few bits um that cable says at points or um locations and stuff it would also help to read bad blood i'd say as well because th this leads on directly from that but apart from that it was quite fun it was quite um simplistic in places confusing in others but it was meant to be confusing so I'm not really going to complain about that and overall it was a good time so I'm giving it 4 stars. I've now got two other Deadpool and Wolverine things I could read. The first one is the X-Force run which is by Rick Remender and this one is um, the two of them on a team together with a few other people as well but I do not have time to read that if I also want to read Deadpool Core and some stuff about Sabretooth and then also Laura Kinney so I think we're going to leave that for now because that would have been a reread for me anyway and I'm trying not to reread things at the moment i'm trying to read new things um so what i think i'm going to do instead is go for the latest one which is deadpool and wolverine at world war three and the only thing is with this is that it's still ongoing and there's currently only two issues available the third one should be coming out soon because it's coming out monthly so i hope for, i'm hoping that the next one's going to come out soon but if you are looking for a current deadpool and wolverine run this may be one to go for i'll advise you once i've read it but I think this is the one I'm going to go for because I've got time for this and then I can go into the other stuff I want to read surrounding this movie and what I think is going to be in this movie. So that is the plan. This was definitely an interesting to a start to a comic. I've read the first two issues that are available and this is definitely very interesting in the sense that Wade has been experimented on this time willingly by the sounds of it and he is essentially being given a very small amount of time to see if he is a man or a monster like he thinks he is this kind of thing um, before essentially he dies um, so very interested to see where this is going to go definitely going to be continuing keeping an eye out for the rest of this because definitely intrigued I don't know if it's a good one to start with if you're brand new um, it's simply because it's talking a lot or relying on you knowing a bit of the backstory of these two characters because obviously they've both done horrible things I reckon you could possibly read this again without much knowledge as long as you know that they've done some quite bad things in the past and sort of that kind of thing I don't know I'll have to see I'll have to have a think on that but definitely a good start definitely intrigued definitely going to be continuing on with this so far I'm thinking another four star read but now that I've finished all my Deadpool Wolverine I'm now going to be going on to Deadpool Call which is very exciting because I know that we're going to see the Deadpool call because I know we're going to see Lady Deadpool because she's been in the advertising. Um, then Funko also let slip or show concepts and stuff for Kidpool, Headpool and then obviously we know about Dogpool who are all Deadpool call and they are essentially the multiversal versions of Deadpool. So definitely want to be reading that so I think that's what I'm going to do now and go on to that and see 
um, who's going to be involved in this, this kind of thing, see if it's a good one to read um, before you've seen the movie without any other knowledge, you know, the usual stuff. I've just started the prelude and what's really um, like fun about this is that we're following Lady Deadpool immediately and um, I'll say right now I'm not entirely a fan of how she's drawn because it's very, very unrealistic in terms of female body standards and all the rest of it, it just doesn't work, I'll try and put a bit in here so you can see what I mean. But what I also love though that I want to talk about is I love exploring multiverses within the Marvel Universe and how that affects different characters. So we've got Captain America here, who's obviously Steve Rogers, and he's got the metal arm, and he appears to be a little bit evil in this one. And I love exploring stuff like this. It just brings me so much joy to see just what one universe change and one thing changing in the universe can change a character so much. It's why I love the What If story so much as well, because they really dig into that kind of stuff and going into what if one thing changed and how that changes everything else and how that changes characters and their designs and their personalities and what they stand for all of this kind of thing I love exploring this stuff so much and I'm really liking this slightly evil Captain America with the Winter Soldier arm. Each issue of this prelude is introducing another Deadpool and we've now opened on the Xavier um, home for orphans and we are following um, Charles talking to Storm before Emma Frost and a whole load of other people turn up for the spring dance and um, in this universe Charles has a crush on Emma Frost and he's trying on different wigs because he thinks he's going to look better if he's not bald and Storm has just turned to him and gone you can't Jedi mind trick the White Queen Emma Frost Xavier besides bald can be dignified like that guy from Star Trek the next generation and obviously the bald guy from Star Trek generation is Patrick Stewart who is Charles Xavier that like someone saw an opportunity and they took it and I love them for it because obviously massive Patrick Stewart fan Star Trek next gen is my favorite Star Trek series I've admittedly only watched that one and part of DS9 wasn't a fan of DS9 um wasn't a fan of the original series either but Next Gen got me through lockdown, so just and I've been a fan of Patrick Stewart since I was seven years old, seeing him as Charles Xavier for the first time. So, brilliant, brilliant little bit there. Today's the day we're at Deadpool and Wolverine Day, and I'm so excited because I mean, it's Deadpool and Wolverine Day, I've been waiting for this for two years, and now today's the day. And I just, excited it's unbelievable I'm so ridiculously excited I literally have Deadpool and Wolverine technically themed earrings in I've got I don't have a Wolverine earring set so instead I went for just a spike to represent the claws and then like Deadpool earrings I've got a Deadpool and Wolverine shirt on as well that I've been saving specifically for this day because naturally I did and now today the plan is to read as many comics as I can that I think are going to be um, related to Deadpool and Wolverine. So I've got obviously Deadpool Core, I've also got actually the last one of Deadpool Wolverine Slash Em Up which was one that I read yesterday that I'm going to read as well because I've just finished updating. Um, hopefully the final issue in World War 3 is going to be coming today if not tomorrow. Um, as well which is exciting then I've also got stuff with Sabretooth then stuff with Laura Kinney as well and things like this and then it'll be time to go watch the movie so I'm going to get on and read some of these and what I think I'm going to do is probably update you on my thoughts on the movie tomorrow maybe Friday I think and I'll have like a, spo a spoiler free section and a spoiler section just so you can skip spoiler section if you don't want to know anything about the movie which I think is going to be best going into it um so I'll probably do it that way because it's going to be about three o'clock in the morning by the time I get back and I'm going to be probably very tired and also the lighting situation is going to be terrible so I think that's what I'm going to do but right now it's time to read some comics. I've now moved on to Deadpool Core because obviously I started that yesterday with the prelude and now I'm reading the main run of it and whoever was uh, writing this, I'll leave their name down below because I can't remember who it is now, but whoever was writing this is a real Trekkie because obviously we had the next gen reference in the prelude, then in this one we've already had a Picard reference and now Wade is essentially flirting his way through an alien bar and Lady Deadpool, otherwise known as Wanda Wilson, has said when you're done Captain Kirking your way through the um, these women, I'm like, 
Whoever's writing this is a serious Trekkie and I'm really enjoying it because I'm not a serious Trekkie but I do quite like a bit of Star Trek every now and again so it's really cool to see this just sort of popping up throughout here and loads of different Star Trek references. I've now finished the first arc of the Deadpool Core run and this has been really fun. It is very very silly in places and very sort of sort of light-hearted in a lot of ways even though they're dealing with this massive big bad thing and all the rest of it um that's taking over the galaxy with its mind all this kind of thing it is just fun it is just plain good fun i definitely think at least for the first volume like the first six issues um you'd be absolutely fine reading it with absolutely no knowledge of the marvel universe whatsoever further than um the fact that there is a multiverse which um, means you can have different variants of um, the same character and if you know like the basics of Deadpool that he's the wise cracking merc with a mouth who can't die essentially apart from that um, you can just read this without any other knowledge and it's just plain funny it's a little bit ridiculous a little bit sort of skimming over um, some of the finer details and things like this but it's a Deadpool comic I have absolutely no problem with this and it was just generally really fun I will say that there's a few um, sexist comments in there that I really wish weren't there and I'm a little bit like why do we need those but apart from that I had a really good time with it and I'm giving it four stars and I will definitely be continuing on and reading the second volume after lunch because that was really good fun. I've now finished the entirety of the Deadpool core and this was interesting in a way but at the same time I'm still not sure how I feel about that second volume because it was talking about like colonialist power and then also um like uprising against that and the oppressed people trying to fight back against it and then using it for their own means and stuff and it feels like Wade was a little bit sort of out of character in that sense because Wade does still have a certain moral code and this wasn't really following that kind of moral code whatsoever and it was more like he was just money hungry and not really caring about anybody else around him and while Wade is pretty blasé about everything he does still care about people and people not being treated wrong and things like this so that just felt a little bit sort of iffy to me and a little bit sort of icky in places as well so I don't know how I feel about it like don't get me wrong I love the idea of the Deadpool core I love all of the characters of the Deadpool core but this just didn't quite hit for me in the end so I think the first volume is getting four stars the second volume is getting three stars and now I'm going to see what I feel um, about the Lady Deadpool stuff. I'm not going to be recommending Lady Deadpool because that was an incoherent mess. I have no idea what I just read. Literally, just not a clue what just happened. Just something to do with riots, TV shutting down and an actor and maybe Lady Deadpool trying to save him. And then General America, aka Captain America, just a general in this world. Is trying to get involved somehow. Something to do with billionaires. I've got no idea what I just read. Literally, I've got no idea what I just read. And I just preferred Lady Deadpool more in the Deadpool core. Because that just... That just didn't work for me. I've got no idea what I just read. No idea what I just read. Really not recommending it. Two stars. Because I say one star for the truly problematic stuff. So I'm just giving it two at the moment. Because... I don't know what just happened and I now think I'm going to go find another Deadpool comic to reverse what I just read to sort of make up for that because I don't want that to be the last Deadpool comic I read for this. I've now just finished Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe again and this is once again absolutely brilliant. If you like gory horror slasher type stuff I'd definitely give this a go um, but only if you already know a fair bit about the Marvel Universe otherwise a lot of it won't make sense um, but it's still a really 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 good run it's one of my favourites that I've ever read of Deadpool and I'm giving it four stars I've also now read a Wolverine comic from the 90s which is one of the first times he fights Sabretooth and that was just alright nothing really to write home about or anything it was just alright the artwork didn't do it for me the storyline just didn't do it for me either I'm only going to give that three stars and now I'm reading Wolverine's Generations and this is um part of the Generation series obviously which is following different um superheroes throughout the Marvel Universe um who have the same like superhero name essentially and it's following them generally in the past when there was only one of them with that superhero name 
and the other one coming through to the past to help them with something and this one specifically is following Laura as she's gone back in time to help Logan in Japan when his adopted daughter has been kidnapped by Sabretooth which is always fun I love seeing like the Wolverines team up together it's always so much fun um and even though Logan doesn't know who Laura is um initially at the beginning of this because she's refusing to tell him obviously because otherwise that could change the future and everything he still immediately trusts her and everything else I find that really fun I just want to point out this conversation here where Laura is essentially going do not leave that little girl you can go read her a bedtime story and everything else she's going to be in danger whether you're here or whether you're not because everyone knows that you care for her and living the life you do you're going to end up causing her a lot of problems and everything else so go back and be with her essentially and Logan's saying like I'm sorry for however I screwed up your life because he's obviously clicked onto the fact that Laura is related to him somehow or is his daughter because he's gone wait a minute I haven't seen my mother's eyes in a very long time but you've got them this kind of thing but I just really love this conversation because obviously Logan and, La Logan and Laura have such a difficult relationship in a lot of ways because originally they thought they were clones of each other then it turns out she is actually biologically his daughter then all of this kind of thing they've had a lot of problems over the years so I just really like seeing them have a proper conversation even like even though this is one that doesn't have as much baggage as it could have done because Logan's in the past. I've now just finished Generations and I think that's a really good one to read um I would say that the only real um, knowledge you need is the fact that Wolverine did have a um, relationship and also um, adopted a little girl while he was in Japan and that also in Laura's timeline Logan is dead and she's mourning him so that's really the only thing you need to know going into this one it would help if you have more knowledge of Wolverine's time in Japan but I wouldn't say it's absolutely vital to read this one as long as you've got that basics down and that is the end of this reading vlog um i'm not gonna read anything else because i don't think i've got time so what i'm gonna do between now and actually going to see the movie is clearing my laptop of space so i can put all of this footage on there so what i am gonna do though is leave a space here for me to put in my movie review so if you do not want to hear anything about Deadpool and Wolverine the movie I'm going to put the timestamp here for you to skip over it and I'm going to be going over that clip in five four three two one over to the re movie review so I saw Deadpool and Wolverine last night and oh my god <laughs> like I'm not going to give any spoilers whatsoever there's going to be no spoilers in this because this film works better if you know nothing about it going in because the cameos and everything have to be seen to be believed but they're not just cameos they're actually like each one has their own sort of mini storyline within this film and they're done so well it's not just hey look it's this person they actually have a reason for being there and it makes sense and all i'm saying about the ca like those cameos and stuff is that it was my childhood all of them were my childhood and my jaw was on the floor seeing them especially one of them I'm not saying who but all I'm saying is, is that I saw them walk in and went, there is no way they got them and they damn well did. And I'm like, how did they do that? There was some that I was expecting, I won't lie. Like one of them I was like, it, they're probably going to be in this movie because it's been so long and all the rest of it. And they've wanted to play the character, everything else. And they turned up and that was fantastic. Um, in a comic book accurate costume as well, I should say. But the people they got in this movie is absolutely just mind-blowing and everything else about this movie is mind-blowing this was the perfect like Deadpool and Wolverine team up movie there is no other way they could have done this team up and they did it so well they honoured the legacy of Logan really really well like the movie as well though I'm never going to be able to look at that ending scene again the same way I'm never going to be able to look at it the same way ever again I won't lie on that one um it's got some of the best needle drops in the MCU ever like literally some of these needle drops are absolutely bonkers which is incredible the storyline is really really good Cassandra Nova is really good I'm really happy with how they use the TVA in this as well and everything else oh my god I just my jaw was on the floor I was speechless by the end of this movie and there was moments where I absolutely was like oh my god flailing fangirl at points in this movie it is so much a love letter 
to the original Fox Marvel Universe. It's a love letter to Deadpool and Wolverine. It is a love letter as well, just to comic books and things like this. It was incredible. They they stuck the landing. They absolutely stuck the landing on this one. This movie should have been impossible to make. To put uh, like the mutants into the MCU in a satisfying way via Deadpool shouldn't have been possible. And to bring back Wolverine to do it as Hugh, like played by Hugh Jackman, it should have been impossible to do while honouring the legacy of Logan and everything else. But they absolutely did it. They absolutely did it. And there are going to be moments in this movie where you're going to be in the cinema watching it. And there's going to be moments where the audience are going to go, they didn't and they damn well did. Or there's going to, like, and there's also going to be moments where you're going to see something coming and be like, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. Very, very similar to the moment in Endgame, the first time you watch Endgame. And Steve Rogers goes, Avengers! And you all go, he's going to say assemble, he's going to say assemble, he's going to say assemble. And you know that moment of anticipation in the room. There's moments like that in this movie and they deliver so well. And you're just like, yes, they said it! Or they did the thing! And all of this kind of it, it is so good. There are two moments in this movie as well that I'm not going to go into specifics about either because obviously spoilers. There are two moments in this movie as well where I very nearly cried. The first one was in the void and all I'm going to say is I thought someone was going to do one thing and then they did another and I was like, oh my god, I was hoping for this moment and it actually happened and I lost it. And then also the second moment was in the, um, like in the titles they put a little bit of a montage and that's all I'm saying but that montage absolutely got me. It got me so hard in the feelings and I was just like, that. Oh, it was an absolutely beautiful montage of things that I absolutely loved. All of this movie is just the most incredible thing. The hype is real. Don't look up spoilers because spoilers will ruin the experience for you. You have to go into this with no knowledge whatsoever. Because I know I was complaining about the X-23 spoiler in the trailer. It's nothing compared to what's coming. It is absolutely nothing compared to what actually happens in this movie and who turns up and everything else. But they pulled it off. They absolutely, like, they pulled it off so well and did all of that. I, I still don't know how they did it. They absolutely stuck the landing. They nailed it. This movie's going to make a billion. I am no doubt about it. This movie is going to make a billion. It's going to bring a lot of people back to Marvel who um, sort of dropped off for a while because of, like, um, if they didn't like the multiverse movies or whatever. I personally really enjoyed all of the Marvel movies and I just think people were just being a bit mean and expecting everything to be endgame. Um, again, every single movie and obviously that's not going to happen. Not every movie can be endgame, but I think this is going to bring a lot of people back into the fold again. I hope it does because... I've missed moments like this in the cinema where everyone is expecting something to happen and it happens and you all want to cheer and all those moments of, of like anticipation and practically falling out of your seat because you're like, what the hell? And actually sort of nearly shouting, what the hell? When certain people turn up and like things happen and everything else. And I mean the fight scenes and everything else. This movie is has to be seen to be believed that's all I've got because otherwise I'm going to start talking about spoilers and I don't want to do that because I want everybody to go and to go and see this movie without any sort of spoilers or anything else because that's what you need you need to go into this with absolutely no knowledge of what's going on what's going to happen who's going to show up do not go on the Deadpool and Wolverine hashtag do not look at anybody else's reviews in case they spoil it or anything else just run to the cinema and go and see it and that's where I'm going to stop because otherwise I will definitely give away spoilers. So, all I'm saying, the movie lived up to the hype and then exceeded it. I was laughing the whole way through. My jaw was on the floor for half of it. Incredible. Absolutely mind-blowing. Incredible. Cannot get over this movie. Just five out of five stars. It's going to make a billion without doubt. That was in incredible and now i'm gonna go wrap up the rest of this talking about the comics 
And now we're back to wrap up the comics. So the ones I definitely recommend is the new X-Men by Grant Morrison. If you want a complete starting point for the X-Men in general, not Wolverine specifically. And you just want a grounding in mutant um, mutant heroes and all of that kind of thing. Grant Morrison's new X-Men is a great place to start. If you want Wolverine specific stuff, Wolverine Origin is great. It gives you the uh, moment he got his um, powers and how he learned to use them. All of this kind of thing it is brilliant. Wolverine Weapon X will cover the um, adamantium skeleton and the reason why he's known as Weapon X, all of that kind of stuff. The death of Wolverine is also fantastic if you're looking for just how Wolverine's connections to the rest of the um, mutants in the Marvel Universe um, and you want to explore all of that and everything else, that is also brilliant. Um, I'd also say as well uh, Return of Wolverine which covers a very similar thing. In terms of Deadpool, then it's definitely Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe, the first one, not um, Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe again. That is definitely not for new people, but Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe, I definitely think is. Also, Deadpool by um, Jerry Duggan is absolutely fantastic. I cannot fault that whatsoever. It is a great starting point if you just want to dive in. It gives you a really good sort of idea of who Wade is and everything else without tying into a major amount of stuff. So that is fantastic. Deadpool by Kelly Thompson and also Deadpool by Alyssa Wong should be read together and they are also absolutely brilliant. And then if you are looking for anything to do with team-ups between Deadpool and Wolverine. Deadpool by Jerry Duggan Volume 3, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly is also fantastic, but you shouldn't read that unless you've read the Jerry Duggan stuff. Deadpool Bad Blood is not a team-up, but you need to read that to read Badder Blood, which I definitely recommend. I loved Badder Blood. Um, Deadpool vs. Old Man Logan is also fantastic. You don't need to read Old Man Logan first to read this. It is a good one to just sort of dive into. The same thing with Deadpool Wolverine the decoy is just a great one to read and then also there is Deadpool and Wolverine slash them up as well which is fantastic and those are going to be my main ones I'm going to be recommending and that is where I'm going to end this because I've been talking enough and this video is probably horrendously long and editing me is going to really want to wrap this up so I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do give me a thumbs up comment down below tell me your favourite Deadpool and Wolverine comic I'd love to know or what you thought about the movie just without any spoilers or if you don't have much uh, that much time give me a sword emoji down below to let me know that you were here I'll also leave a link as well down below to all of my social media fun to check it out including to the comic book sanctum which is filled with so many things about Deadpool and Wolverine if you want to get to know them even more than you have done through this reading vlog. I'll also leave a link as well down below to my Etsy store that says bookish merch if you want to treat yourself to something bookish today or if you just want to see any more of my videos please click subscribe here and over here will be the link to my previous video. But till next time everyone, bye!